Okay, so another session, and we're gonna be recreating this whole effect from zero, of which uh, it's the same effect achieved by Peter Clay's for the 3D technical effects, 3D buzz technical effects. But we're gonna be recreating the whole thing without any particles or anything like that. So let's go ahead and bump into this and see what we can work with. Let's bounce. Let's do this. Cheer. Okay, so I've already set up my little geometry thing. We're gonna we already name it we we've been through the Masai Mara. It's apparent as to why that is. Now we're gonna begin the whole thing by dropping in a grid. This sort is gonna be the base for the geometry to be laid down. Now you can set up any resolution. I'm gonna just do thirty by thirty. It's all a matter of preference depending on how good your computer is. Now we're gonna drop a box that we're gonna copy to the grid so copy obviously all right so we're gonna put that there and there and now if you visualize this obviously the box is too big so for one we need to go ahead and rescale the box i'm gonna scale it to zero first then scale it up till it fits in all right so let's scale it up a little bit right about that should be plenty so i mean that's a good enough resolution to visualize the whole thing now we got two problems as for one uh, we got two sides to deal with you got one side and the second side so let's deal with the ripple or the transition that we're gonna be dealing with now this is an example exactly like from Peter Clay's uh, technical uh, effects where he does the boxes jumping up and down it's the same thing we're gonna be doing only um, no particles and we're going to be using more VOPs than anything else. So, matter of fact, we're going to just go ahead and dive in into VOPs so that we can actually start building this whole thing up. Now, I'm going to double click on the VOP, uh, maximize this, Control B to maximize it. Uh, if you're a Macintosh, I don't know what the shortcut is, but it should be like probably Control B also. But now that we got that, what we're going to go ahead and do is okay we have two things we can do we can get a subtract and here we can make a constant out of this I just made a mouse click and create a constant and now for this one I'm gonna press P on my keyboard so that we can set up a, a vector uh, class for that is it a class <laughs> I don't know but it should be on the center point so zero 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 and I'll put all the points so literally right now you have all the points five uh, nine hundred points passing through here and they're gonna get subtracted to the center point over here now what that does is create a new vector which actually if you output as of right now I'm gonna output it you can output it as a as an attribute so obviously you just plug this in over here and it's gonna you gonna have to name it something different so in our case it would be vec or something or just to visualize the whole thing much more easily without any you know kind of problems you can actually just plug the output of this because it's a vector to the point normal and that way if I just go ahead a uh, control B to get out and for one I'm have to unplug the color did I plug any color no oh no why did this come black oh the normal is actually doing the thing like so that's why <laughs> so if I actually plug on this you can see what the normals uh, all of them are actually looking in one direction right here at the center all of them actually looking right there so it's pretty much the same thing if you created this attribute press D on the keyboard and added a custom attribute which is a vector attribute and pointed it to this particular attribute to look at this is, it will produce the same effect all over again but now this is just having the normals all face to, to the center now that's just for visualization purposes so it's, it's not really essential but again in VOPs you got another style look at something else that you can do if I can actually get it it's called a distance VOP essentially I'm trying to redo the whole thing again now I can calculate the distance for every single point from for, okay don't forget this global imports all the points all the point data right so it's gonna calculate all the distances for all these points to this particular vector which is the zero 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 vector right at the uh, center of the world right so that was going to give us a distance now the subtract does the same thing the only difference is you actually have to go to vector and get a length for that and 
pretty much you're doing the same thing as this one node having these two nodes over here is actually like doing this one whole thing in one so pretty much you can actually say that the distance up over here is actually a subtractor with the length all pre multi you know doing the math inside one node all in one node so actually if you actually you know you're good in VARP you can actually create a new VARP node or something like that compile back to VARP type or something like that but that's already done for us so having that done you can actually use this as the output that you're gonna be using or this one in my case I'm gonna just go ahead and use the length because you know, it's right there now for this one is also just for visualization or just to visualize the whole thing so pretty much what we need to do now is actually find a way to create a ripple rippling effect over here now for the length over here if I actually kind of go to our top view over here and we look at all these points uh, I'm actually going to shade it like this if you look at it from the center point over here this is the closest point these are the closest points right here on the first square or the first cube over here or square whatever you want to call it now as you go out they get longer and longer right so one two three four five six seven going up so the lengths are actually different for every single point so this one will be the longest one the length from here to here will be the longest one so you can imagine how long that is I don't know how many cube units it is but it's pretty long right now this one is one so all around this is one now if you think about it all of this is one so the next cube down will be all of them are two and three and four so you can if you can visualize it, it's just a circle going round and round all the way to the biggest one now we're gonna use this you know just some few basic stuff just to get the whole thing running so in our case we can actually for one fit the whole thing that we need just to get the everything evaluated or you can actually use uh, and operators and ma minimum and maximums to actually create a segment of the whole curve now I don't know whether it's really necessary but you can visualize both of them now I can go ahead drop in uh, compare uh, utility up over here and compare whether the length the distance we're going to be comparing every single point distance don't forget that now this is VOP so it's dealing with every single point we're gonna make a parameter so drop in a parameter all right so the parameter over here is gonna be now this goes up to the scene level so it's actually over here so you might want to name it something different like uh, diameter or something like that anything which is most sensible on, on the sub level now this is a float attribute now I'm okay this is a zero as of right now it's a zero value and it's on the same zero value which is going to be this is where you're going to get the values from and actually put it into VOPs and then bring it back out so here you can actually compare what this value is actually greater so in our case you're asking whether the length of all the points is greater than zero and this now if you look at this it's a true or false that's a blue the blue the blue means it's an integer so that's a zero one for right now it's a boolean it's a zero one so boolean or integer whichever one you want to call it but it's the same thing essentially so zero or one so it's going to output true or false now in our case right now it actually output false because there's no single point it's actually actually i would output which one is greater than zero all of them are greater than zero so every single point actually get evaluated in, in this case now we can actually drop in another compare at the same time and put the lengths over here and then we'd actually to this particular attribute to this particular parameter over here we can actually go ahead add a constant value so that way we have a little bit of a number than this one so if this one is zero we're gonna add a constant number over here of let's say one or one point whatever you can just uh, I mean you can play with the numbers over here you don't matter what kind of number you have then you can actually just put that right here and then put this as a less than now if you actually visualize this if any number is greater than zero that means all of this is greater than zero right but again if it's less than two assuming two is right here if it's less than two there'll be the, so the number will actually be two to zero in between so now actually if you use uh, 
the rules that are actually based over here so if we actually go ahead and press the whatever so under the where's that place that nowadays the end it's under the utility the end now the end only evaluates true when both the conditions are actually true or one and one but i believe in vops it actually outputs if actually both conditions are actually zero it also outputs as true so i'm i'm not really sure but i think it does work like that so in our case we want to compare whether this and this actually output a value of one actually output as true so if the value is greater than zero that that particular point gets evaluated and if it's actually less than whatever this attribute is of which in our case is actually two cause zero as the input plus two is actually what you're comparing to the length over here so the lengths are actually already defined so zero to fifty let's say so if it's in between zero and two we're gonna select a point so if you actually select these two and plug them in over here if both of them serve as true you can actually do something with this now so now in our case you can actually do anything from delete them to select them put them in a group or anything like that so we can actually have a two-way switch of which the uh the basic over here is you need something with a on and off switch so basically a condition which is a true or false which is actually just a zero or one value which is actually the same output from here now if it's actually true you can actually group all the points if it's for you basically can actually do anything so actually we'll try something like uh, uh, we'll have a flow to vector I'm gonna drop a flow to vector so I'm just trying to show you what you can actually do with this so a flow to vector and we're gonna give it a value of red so well assuming this is an RGB so one RGB so one being red the R that will give you a red color so if you output this you can actually output this as a visualization for the colors so and the point color if you plug it in you can see that uh, the red color just gets inputted to everywhere where the values 